we'll see you tonight. And that was it. Deborah Flores Narvaez is an accomplished dancer and cast member of Fantasy, the adult review at the Luxor. When the 31-year-old started missing practices and performances, the suspicion started building. It's not her. Shock to the family. It's not her. I uh, uh, cried and shed the tears. It's not her. One of the family's missing. They had a rehearsal. Police have issued a critical missing persons alert. Her ex-boyfriend saw her. Debbie, last seen Sunday night. Stopped by quickly at his place. Debbie's car found abandoned in Vegas. She was on her way back home. Cops now combing through the vehicle for clues. Let her go and let her be and let her come home to us. This is a professional dancer. She is a Las Vegas showgirl. She has her master's degree and she was an NFL cheerleader. And she's gone. She's missing. She has to be found. Her car was abandoned in North Las Vegas. And with us tonight, I'm Jean Casares of In Session in for Nancy Grace. With us tonight exclusively, primetime exclusive, is her sister. And this is Celeste Flores Narvaez, the sister of the missing Debbie Flores Narvaez. Celeste, I want to ask you, first of all, you said that her makeup bag was found in the abandoned car, her abandoned car. What about her purse? As far as I know, the, there was only a small bag in her a car that was found. Um, investigators described to me the bag. I later on asked the roommates um, what her makeup bag looked like, and they described to me that makeup bag exactly so that it was her makeup bag, that it wasn't her purse that was found. Do you know if she carried a purse? Yes, of course. Um, she did carry a purse um, as well as her cell phone with her at all times. And that's what I was going to ask you. Cell phone. What, where is her cell phone? Has it been found? Um, as, I, as I know of right now, um, no. Um, the investigators are pulling up her police, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, her phone records. Okay. We had heard her cell phone was off. Is that what you had heard? Um, her phone was apparently on that night, but after work it was off, you know, during the time of her disappearing, the phone was turned off. Phone was turned off. Let's go to Ron Shindell. He's a former New York Police Department Deputy Inspector joining us from New York. Ron Shindell, I want to ask you, if a cell phone is off, can you trace pings or location or anything at all? You can only trace up until the time they turn the phone off. Once the phone is off, it's not emitting any power. No, you're not going to be able to trace it. Hmm. All right. Another question I want to ask you. This abandoned car, it's very mysterious to me. And, you know, I've, I've worked a lot of cases, and the Las Vegas Police Department are tremendous in their crimes and investigations. But this car stood uh, in this area vacant for days before the Las Vegas Police found it. Somebody had a key to drive it into that lot, that vacant lot. Somebody had a key. So where do police go in relation to that? And isn't that a, a relevant fact? Well, a good thing about a car from an investigator's point of view, it's, it's a vault of physical information. In the car, you're going to find lots of shiny surfaces, which lead to a lot of fingerprints, the ability to capture all these fingerprints. Also, a car is going to hold hair samples. It may hold bodily uh, fluid samples like mucus and saliva or blood. And it stays in there, and a car is closed for the most part. So investigators will be able to go in there, use this physical evidence, and maybe eliminate some people or identify some people who could have been in that car any time during this time. Reach out to those folks and then try to get a timeline, or at least try to develop additional leads from that physical information. To Pat Brown, criminal profiler, author of The Profiler, joining us tonight from Washington, D.C. You know, when, when we look at these cases, the first thing you have to do is look at the last person that saw the person that was missing. That's the ex-boyfriend. But in this case, uh, there are fans that could be obsessed. There are potential financial issues that can be motivating factors to, to leave an area. Uh, what are your thoughts as you see all these facts here? Well, I think the police, although they're not saying it, probably do have the ex-boyfriend as a person of interest for a number of reasons. One is because he is an ex-boyfriend, and we all know that that often is, you know, the person closest to the victim is the one who's involved. Secondly, he was the last person to see her. And it's interesting because there wasn't much time between where she supposedly stopped at his house and then went off someplace and didn't show up. So we are really talking about a small period of time. Why was she there? And did she really, nothing really happened to her at that, at that place? 
Uh, the third thing is that odd, peculiar message to the family. I think it really is important to find out and talk to all our friends, find out what could be the problem. It's interesting they talked to the boyfriend about it and he didn't seem to say anything about what her problem was. And that's suspicious to me as well. And when we take a look at where the car was, a lot of times you find a car in an empty lot, you know, a good portion of the way across town in a kind of a bad area. Uh, you're looking at somebody who's dumped a car there because they want to, you know, uh, have, have the police look that direction and not over to where they are. And so remove the, the license suspect. plate. Somebody came well, and removed the license plate. E either the person did it who dumped it, or it is possible if you leave it there for a few days, somebody's going to steal the license plate. So right. I don't know how long those license plates were actually gone. Right. A very desolate area, though. Not a lot of people in this area. Let's go to the callers. Heather in Kentucky. Hi, Heather. Uh, how are you? Fine. Thank you for calling tonight. Thanks. Hang on. My question is, um, MySpace, I know she got pictures. If she has a MySpace, can they check her messages? You better or believe they have got her computer, but guess what, Heather? There has been no activity on her social media accounts at all, MySpace and Facebook, since she went missing.